tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, 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 we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Go! Morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Joining me as always, uh, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and two, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. How are you guys? I'm 30 years old today. It's your birthday. Yes, very first Wednesday. 30 years old. Oh, oh, God. God. 30 years old. If you're my friend, <laughs> you need to tell me when it's your birthday coming up. <laughs> Callan didn't tell me. You didn't tell me. I need to know. Happy birthday, actually. Happy Thank you, birthday, yes. I'm 30. I don't, I don't want to tell you about 30. 30. Yes, that's why I'm keeping on the low, but it's going to be all over Instagram. You're going to tell me about it. Six. There's <laughs> no more 20-year-olds on no, Tim Fall Hat. It's, it's, it's over. No. It's okay, dude. Can it's get, not bad. Uh, yeah, five I, more years of running and gunning. Five more, that's it? Yep, and then 35, you start Actually, feeling. I feel exactly the same as I did at like 28, so don't yeah, listen to Yeah, but he's not a big partier. You are. Congratulations for right? making it this far, actually. Congratulations, dude. Fuck. No kids. That was not. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's, I that's mean, a, that's like unicorn shit. For Mexican, it is. Yeah, you got 20. You got, you got five more years. Enjoy it. Five more years. <laughs> five more years. And then you battle the forces that's not true, of rigor mortis. You, okay. you take care of yourself. Do a little exercise here and there. What's your exercising, uh, Xavier? Not exactly. Much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm made up with heavy legs. We got a great show today. We got a great show for you today. We have John Bush is back. Uh, he sponsored us in the past, but he's got a really great uh, seminar. He's coming out for free. It's a free seminar to you. It's a free seminar. And it's cbdcoptout.com. And he's a five. Five days is it five? Five yeah, days, five, five days. Day CBD Damn. challenge. They're going to teach you how to opt out of the digital prison that is coming. Okay. We don't. I think this is the most important show, and you need to listen to what John has to say because he obviously cares, and he cares enough to give it to you for free. So that's amazing. Now, if you'd like to see me live, I have some shows coming up. Uh Again, we're recording this on Monday. We put it on a Wednesday, but I'm going to be at the Dojo of Comedy. Uh, I'm February. Where are we going? Oh my God. February, February 16th, 17, 18. 17, 18 is my shows. I'm going to be hosting the 16th. I'll be hosting the five year anniversary of the Dojo of Comedy in, L in New Jersey. The 17th and 18th is the. Uh, uh, my shows come get weird. Howie Dewey, myself, just dropping hammer of the gods on some people. That's at the Dojo of Comedy. If you put in Tiff's Comedy or Dojo of Comedy dot com, you'll find tickets. Then the following week, Spokane, T Tacoma, February twenty fourth in Spokane, February twenty fifth in uh in Tacoma. Uh, Tim Fall Hat Comedy, Eddie Bravo, Xavier Guerrero, myself, getting weird. Okay, and then the week after that. Bloomington, Minnesota, House of Comedy, March second through the fourth, uh, live in the in the Mall of America. It's one of my favorite comedy clubs. I love you all very much. Is there anything else you'd like to push, everybody? Uh, we don't smoke the same. Just got banned from YouTube. So head over to Twitch, Patreon, anywhere to help us out. With no more super chats, no more money from them. They can go fuck themselves. Okay. Uh, yeah, just follow me at Johnny Wooder on Twitter. I uh, I'll tweet out whatever is going on there. All right. All right. So, yeah, check out Johnny Wooder. Check out Xavier Guerrero. Check out myself. Check out our affiliates, okay? We have a lot of great things going on. We have uh, my dates are on samtriplee.com. We have premium content. You click a banner. It's a great way to support all the shows. Myself, Conspiracy Social Club, Zero's for free now. And then uh, Tim Fall Hat Premium. 
uh, all on Rockfin. We have Cash Daddy's Patreon. People are making fat cash on that. Go check that out. And then all the free audio you could ever want, plus our social media, all on Sam Tripoli. So enjoy this episode. Uh, uh, please enjoy this episode uh, with John Bush. Uh, have a great week. Enjoy the show. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Welcome back, returning champion. He was on the show before we loved him. We're having him back. He is uh, His website is cbdcoptout.com. Please welcome John Bush. How are you, John? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. Got some important stuff to discuss with you guys. Now, John, full disclosure, you uh, bought some ads on the show, but you'd already been on the show a couple times. And I do feel that what you are talking about is very important, so we wanted to have you on. And I think it's very important because we are flying towards this, this, this digital prison in which we are going to have to figure out how to get out of this surveillance and this way of controlling us. They're doing it right now. And I know you're talking about that. So I think it's very important that we have you on the show. We loved your last performance and we're very thankful to have you on again. So before we start, can you tell, for those listeners that didn't hear you on your last appearance, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Okay, sure, sure. So I've been an activist for truth, freedom, peace for 20 years now. Uh, woke up, quote unquote, although you never really complete complete your wake up process. Um, I woke up in 2002 when I caught a documentary by old Alex Jones about 9-11, 9-11 Road to Tyranny. That sent me down a rabbit hole of researching the conspiratorial view of history. Learned about uh, libertarianism from Ron Paul and his campaign in 2008 and did a lot of political activism. We had some victories, but I was unsatisfied with those victories because in reality, we weren't creating more freedom for ourselves and our communities. We were simply slowing the growth of tyranny. So then I started exploring alternative institutions, uh, opting out of existing systems and building new ones. We call it exit and build strategy. Yeah. Uh, around this time, I learned about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, uh, helped to start a network uh, that's now over 36,000 people strong called the Freedom Network. And it's just free people getting together to work on solutions and creating more freedom. Uh, more recently, I started a company where we, we do online courses. We do in-person workshops and events. It's called Live Free Academy. The website's livefree.academy. And it's this company that's hosting this CBDC opt-out challenge. Okay, so let's get into that, man. So uh, thank you for that. I'm super mm -hmm. excited to... Uh, I love who you ha have. Um, are these guys speaking at the uh, all these people speaking, or are, or are they people who've uh, appeared on your show before? Uh, you show you show a bunch of people here, like uh, Derek Brons, who I love, and uh, Richard Grove and James Corbett. Are they speaking at your events? Yeah, a lot of them have spoke at events. In, the, in fact, every single one of them spoke at events in the past, but they're all going to be guests on the CBDC opt-out challenge. It's a five-day thing. It's totally free. I'll be going live every day, February 6th through the 10th. Uh, we're going to teach people what central bank digital currencies are and specifically how we can navigate around them to create free communities, our own economies, using alternative currencies. And those folks are going to be guests that help me to convey these ideas and strategies so people can implement them in their lives. Well, I love it, man. So let's get into this, man. We've We've seen this, what's going on in China now with this kind of like surveillance system that they have. Everybody calls it the Chinese uh, surveillance system. It's really the CIA, uh, Pentagon, you know, DARPA system that they brought over there to test on those people and what they're going on. And we're starting to see it slowly, slowly, slowly be implemented here. We were just talking on the last show about how, you know, you they're, they're not taking cash at a lot of the grocery stores right now, or they're limiting it to you. Uh, they're like, okay, if you want to pay cash, you got to go to this with a live cashier and the lines down the, the hall, but you can go to this uh, really quick, buy your groceries at self-checkout, but no cash. 
no cash. They're doing it. They're slowly doing it. So my question to you, John, is like, can we truly opt out of this thing? Is there a way to opt out on an internet that is being controlled by the people who want to control us? Uh, yeah, there are ways. And it just really depends on how far people want to take it. So during this challenge, we are going to present a wide range of solutions. Now, there's going to be some folks like uh, Derek Rose, for example, that are going to take it all the way. They're going to drop the bank account. They're going to stop paying taxes. They're going to only use alternative currencies, right? Now, some people like myself will take a more middle path approach, but I think the real important thing to do is to recognize, and we already had some suspicions. We already were aware of this strategy, but after COVID, it became very clear that the way the government, the deep state, the shadow government operates, they get people to do things they normally wouldn't choose to do voluntarily by making life difficult for them. And so that's what we're going to see take place with the central bank digital currencies. And the overall strategy, essentially, that we're going to teach in this challenge is to preemptively position yourself so you can at least meet your basic needs. You can acquire food, housing, whatever it may be. So if they say all of a sudden you can only use CBDCs and if you don't get up to date on your shots, uh, you don't have all the 20,000 pictures that they're passing out, uh, then we're not going to let you do business. We're not going to let you use the currency. This is what the Mark of the Beast was really all about. So we want to have a bunch of people start trading amongst themselves, uh, finding the local farmer's market vendors, finding the child care, the plumber, the electrician that's willing to barter or that's willing to use cryptocurrency or silver dimes or some sort of time bank, whatever it may be, whatever works for each community. And so I think that's how we're going to avoid it. And there's a lot of people that think like we do, but people are really going to have to do some work in order to be prepared for this. Because if we don't do anything and we just allow it to happen, I feel like this central bank digital currency is one of the death nails in the coffin for freedom and future generations will grow up never having understood what it was like to trade outside the system or to not have every single transaction scrutinized. Yeah, I mean, you, you, some of the things you wanted to talk about is obviously that, uh, you know, CBDC, which is going to be the Federal Reserve digital currency, okay? They're going to be able to use it to basically uh, stop it so you can't buy anything. You can't go to the store, buy anything. You you know, I, I mean, I'm sorry, dude, but I know a lot of people that are talking about how they're, I mean, you talk about the guys that the last, uh, the last American vagabond, like he's constantly talking about how they're messing with his computer. That he, you know, people in his apartment building, they have no problems with their their internet. His internet drops all the time. Eddie talks about anytime he does a, a, a show with Jim Brewer, bam, <clears throat> his internet goes bad. They're doing it all the time. I mean, I have this new iPhone. It has so much problems. Johnny says he doesn't have a problem. Are they messing with me? You never know. I mean, it's important that we... Uh, use technologies, we figure out ways that are uncontrollable or at least relatively uncontrollable because these CBDCs, there's all sorts of stuff they can do with them. And just to be clear, most of the money in the U.S. and most countries, it's it's digital now, right? It's a bunch of ones and zeros. And in fact, when the Federal Reserve creates new money or when commercial banks create new money, every time you take out a loan, that's new money that gets created. It's mostly ones and zeros on an account, sending it through PayPal or Venmo, right? Well, along with the CBDC, they would ultimately eliminate cash. But the big concern is that now there will be digital money that's programmable. So there's all sorts of stuff that they could do with this. For, For starters, you can track, trace, and analyze all of it. So right now you can still do stuff off book. You can, you know, the waiter or waitress that gets a cash tip, oftentimes they just pocket it. They don't claim it on their taxes, right? Well, all that will be a thing of the past unless you prepare for it. But what's even more frightening is let's say you listen or download Tinfoil Hat Podcast or you... Um, attend a protest and your phone, it tracks it and uh, the GPS coordinates, or perhaps as happened recently in Canada, 
you financially support a peaceful protest movement, the Freedom Convoy movement, right? They actually shut people's bank accounts down for that. So this isn't very far-fetched. Here's another one that I think is highly likely. And um, I'd love to talk about more the the nexus between central bank digital currencies, digital ID, uh, social credit scores, and then the passport. It's my belief that passport is going to evolve into some sort of carbon passport, right? They're using environmentalism as a means to implement the new world order globally ever since Agenda 21, even before then. And so the World Economic Forum, which is a big proponent of central bank digital currencies, they're actually talking about this PCA, personal carbon allowance. So it's not very far-fetched, and this will happen in the distant, not so distant future, where each individual or each individual household is given a certain carbon allowance per month, perhaps. And let's say you go over that carbon allowance because you haven't purchased the offset credits or you weren't recycling enough or you went on too many trips to visit your elderly parents out of state. And now you go to purchase a plane ticket, they'll automatically incur a higher fee through the central bank digital currency system, which is integrated with the carbon allowance. Or perhaps they won't let you travel at all. Or maybe your, the price of gas is more expensive because you still have one of the gas guzzlers instead of an electric car. The point is, because money is such an important role in an economy and in our lives, they are going to leverage this digital system that's a total surveillance system in order to coerce people into behaving a certain way. And it's a very frightening prospect. Yeah, it is. it is scary here. But so, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's just kind of crazy. Now, if you look up, they're already talking about car, uh, climate change credits in California. I mean, <clears> like, <throat> you're, I mean, it's nuts. It's nuts. What do you think it's going to start? Like, if you drive a Tesla, like, it, it, I mean, if you drive an electric car, you're already allowed in the carpool lane. That's, well, that's dude, a little credit already, score. I mean, that's they a already score. give you, the federal government gives you $7,500 to buy now an American made, but an, an EV. I mean, you get $7,500 taken off the price of the vehicle. They're already doing that. Oh, my God. 2023 residential California climate change schedules. I mean, like, and they're, 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 I mean, it's, they're coming for our gas, uh, our gas tools, you um, know, even lawnmowers and shit like that. That's all going to be banned. Oh, it's going down. And the whole climate thing, I mean, they've it's been using that climate change scare for quite some time. So it's definitely going to be a big part of implementing the system. And unfortunately, this whole world economic forum thing and the great reset, they're very, 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 very sneaky. They're very sneaky in that a lot of this sounds like, Oh, great. We should care about the environment. Um, but in reality, it's all just mechanisms for manipulation and control, but there is stuff we can do about it. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of people, but uh, we're going to present some ideas and strategies that can hopefully set people up for success to yeah. avoid all this. It's kind of crazy, man. It's like super crazy. And it's it's like, it, it seems like the masses are, it's like the masses versus a small group of people. And I'm not even just talking the World Economic Forum. I'm talking about the people that are participating in pushing the lies. I have a buddy of mine. I think he's the, one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my life. And bro, he just pushes the, and he's, he does it in a funny way. And it's not that he's a, he's not a bad guy anyway. He's actually a, a, like in Hollywood. He doesn't even live in Hollywood anymore. He left, but like he, I forget what the joke was. It was like, oh, maybe if like, you know, we'll, we'll make up the only way Alex jo uh, or, Ke or who was the guy who got, who shot somebody on? Oh, Alec Baldwin. The only way Alec Baldwin can come back is if he sh shoots Kyle Rittenhouse, right? <laughs> and, but it's a line. It sounds funny, but it's, it's based off the narrative that Kyle Rittenhouse is a fucking white Murderer. supremacist. Yeah. Or, no, well, it's based on the idea that people who think he's a white supremacist run Hollywood. That's yes. what. That's the joke, and it's a well-written joke by a f wonderful person. But you know, this guy's also talked about, you know, climate change is our biggest thing. It's like, well, now if he's that, kind of, then he probably doesn't mean it the way I said. But it's funnier the way I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you punching up his uh, stuff? <laughs> well, but I'm saying if 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 he was like Bill Hicks and he said it, then that's how I would take it. But right. obviously he's not. No, so. and he, he is. He's he's funny, bro, and I love him, and he's a great guy. It's, it's just. 
it's just this is the narrative being pushed, but it's like this tiny group of people. Why is it always rich white kids that are concerned about the environment? Because it's not a tangible thing. It's it's a concept. And you can you are fighting windmills. Rich kids are Don Quixote and they're battling windmills. That is what they're doing. Nothing else to do. I mean, they have yeah. they're, all their basic needs are from the moment they cried their first cry out of the womb. They most likely were born in the best hospitals, went to, got the best nannies, got the best pre- preschools, best kindergarten, bang, 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 all the way up to getting internships in the best gigs, getting ju- I mean, you, everything's been taken care of. So you have to worry about things you can't tangibly touch. Climate change, racism everywhere, sexism everywhere, homophobia anywhere. And it's not just like, it's not just, hey, man, I love everybody. No, it's you have to push the agenda full force to be accepted into that group. And even when you do that, they'll still sacrifice you at the altar. There's a lot you got to sacrifice to be them. A lot, lot you I mean, got to believe they be behind. All, all gas, no brakes. He was totally woke. And they still took away everything from him. That's a good theory that folks that have no struggle in life have a bunch of extra time on their hands. So they're looking for stuff to struggle about. But I mean, I mean if you're busy trying to make ends meet, then it's less important than some esoteric BS like you're talking about. It's all, it's the perfect mechanism to control, to freak people out. Like civilization's going to end. You're going to die. We're going to destroy the planet. Now give up your rights. Um, You got to hand it to them. And it's been something, this environmentalism thing has been something that's been leveraged for quite some time without a doubt. I mean, if you look up all the things environmental alarmists got wrong, it's literally everything that's come out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. So now on top of that, they are telling you there are too many people. We are we are in a depopulation like movement right now. China, think about this, man. Nobody wants to bang Japanese chicks. That's shocking. Right. Nobody, I mean, dude, in America, they're prime it's real estate. <laughs> in Japan, nobody wants to hit it. And that's their and, and their governments actually acknowledge that they're worried about it, right? The Japanese no, government. The, the prime minister said yeah. they are in free fall right now. It's funny. Why is their why is their government okay acknowledging those kinds of things? Because I think they're already, like, um, you know, after World War II, the U.S. government went in there and structured their entire yeah. government. They're completely under control. I mean, when, when when we notice it, it'll be too late, right? When we when we assume that there's not enough children to take care of the old people. Because that's China's problem, right? That they don't have enough children. I mean, dude, enough people to take care some, of the elderly. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, John. But like, I think the whole thing had to do with putting in DNA splicers and killing off the elderly because they can't afford it. It could be. I mean, that's that's who it affected the most. There's all sorts of theories about why it happened. Some people think that they had it in the works for a little bit further on down the road and then trump like him or not i don't think he's controlled opposition like some people do uh he kind of disrupted a good chunk of their agenda now mind you he's totalitarian he racked up the dead he's not perfect in any way whatsoever i don't support the guy i always like to throw out that disclaimer but he did represent a departure at least in part but then you could throw that back in my face because he's the one that rammed through the uh Operation Warp warp Speed. But when it comes to studying the Great Reset, right, and I imagine most of your listeners are aware, but if they're not, it's this effort. It's a marketing campaign, really, for the New World Order 2.0. They want to reshape economies. They want to reshape the way people do business. They're going to implement this concept called stakeholder capitalism, where what matters for a company is no longer going to be profits and benefiting the directors or the shareholders, which in order to do that, oftentimes you have to benefit the clients and the customers, right? But it's going to be like all the stakeholders that are affected by this business. And of course the earth and the environment and the climate will be one of these stakeholders. It's also going to be like inclusion and equity and all this woke jargon and nonsense. And then another piece of it is this fourth industrial revolution. That's where they'll merge biology and technology 
technology, wear, wearable devices, implantable devices, 5G interconnectivity, smart cities, right? And so COVID and all of the policies that were enacted after COVID or during COVID, they fit hand in hand with this great reset agenda. Keeping a, the metaverse is a big part of it too. Taking people out of the physical space, the town square, uh, having a conversation at the office water cooler, moving them all to Zoom, to virtual, uh, the whole passport thing, right? So I think the passport is really just a means of controlling people's freedom of movement. That's what it's all about. And the, it's the first implementation of it is was in the vaccine. But as I said, I think it's going to be a big piece uh, uh, towards expanding uh, this carbon stuff and, and how you can drive and then you tie in the social credit score. But that's what I think it was. I think it was just the perfect means to the end of implementing this great reset agenda. But you can bet depopulation is a big part of it, too. I don't know if anybody, everybody's, anybody's ever seen Alex Jones's Endgame documentary. It's a classic. If folks haven't seen it, it's really good. It's all about eugenics and depopulation. Pretty eye opening. He did. A, he did a good job on that one. Yeah, I, I think we're just heading towards a sci fi future where those who live in the big cities will give up um, uh, privacy for comfort, and those who live in smaller cities will not be completely old school, but they'll be a lot more closer to old school, more community community. Whereas in the big, I mean, like we already live in the big city. Like, how many of your neighbors are you friends with? Downstairs, just because he's downstairs. But there's no to my left, to my right. I just don't care. I just you know how we tell people like, hey, you have to know your neighbors. I went downstairs purposely, just because he lived downstairs. Like, I at least got to know one person in the building. If it wasn't for this show, I wouldn't have gave a fuck who my downstairs neighbor was. Yeah, the only reason I ended up knowing mine is because we all had to come together to sue the landlord <laughs> one time, or we almost did. But that was. Uh, yeah, and where I am now, you know, I, I know them, but only because of my girlfriend's been living there for 30 years and they knew the people before. But yeah, when the other places I've lived here, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. yeah, and that's what they want. They want you to be all alone. Well, they yeah, and they want you afraid at your neighbor, you know, yep. afraid to go out. That way you're, you're more likely to snitch on them. Yeah. And ah. we're getting into it, and yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Sorry. You can call, you can, you could sit there and talk about snitching is like a liberal progressive thing. You're seeing this happening in the conservative movement all the way, regardless of whatever you think, even about Stephen Crowder. And again, I'm on TV, Dave Landau, but him recording his friend's phone call without even telling him that wouldn't happen years ago. Yeah. Yeah, the only um, excuse I heard for that is that it was a business phone call, you know, and you might be recording business calls as a matter of course. Yeah, but know, then just, putting it out? Or, or, and, or what about in Crowder's defense saying that friends don't give you contracts like that? That's not his friend. It's called negotiate. I listen, yeah, I know, I know. I'm, I'm more saying, on uh, Stephen yeah. Crowder than I am on Daily Wire, okay? But, like, you're seeing people in the conservative space talking about, if I know something, I'm going to tell all you guys. Well, it's like that's called snitching. Like, if your life or your, your job is in peril or your brain is in peril, I understand defending yourself. But the way you're going after, you're just putting out people's secrets all, all right, the time. So then when is it cool to be a whistleblower? Not cool, but, like, when is it okay? Like, when do you think, do you think you don't think Alex, Cla Alex Crowder in a way who's, like, I'm whistleblowing the Daily Wire? You don't see himself as, like, oh, I'm a whistleblower. But, what's the, what, 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 but, but then we're getting into the, the, the nuance of it, and the nuance is, is that... Steven Crowder wanted guaranteed money, mm -hmm. even if it, the show wasn't producing profit. That's really what it is. No. Uh, yeah, he so didn't want to get gets hit, demonetized. Yeah, he was gonna, yeah, he didn't want to. So, wanted. and I'm not, I'm like, you don't sign Steven Crowder if you, if that's an issue for you, because he goes hard in the paint. He's going to get demonetized. And the second he gets the money, he's going to go extra hard because it's guaranteed money. Yeah, and he's got and like, but that's what makes him great, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, he's not. He can't go hard though. Is the, is the point because he would be demonetized, and then they would if, take money from him. That would cost him money. So that's the whole thing. John, do you have any uh, thoughts on the Crowder thing? If you've seen it, or do you even it's care? Like self censorship. No, I'm just looking it up here. Um, seem I get a kick out of it. I, 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 I like performance based pay personally. If if I were to make an opinion on it, I don't know the exact details, but I think people got to earn their keep. And then it gives you an incentive to ensure that 
you're doing everything you can, but I guess there's a factor of people being booted off of social media or I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, it's it's just kind of crazy because you get in this social credit score and stuff like that. And it's just like we're we're now just entering this fucking dystopia of night a nightmare dystopia. <clears throat> I mean it's a nightmare. Anybody can so let's say you and I don't like each other, right? I can make up stuff. They say that happens in Israel, right? We're like Palestinians that don't like other Palestinians will say that person's working with the Israeli government and then those people go on trial and their life is ruined. Well, dude, it happened. And I mean, it happened in East Germany all the time with the Stasi. I mean, people would narc on their neighbors that they didn't like, you know, and get them in trouble with secret police. I mean, I mean, this is all kind of like that in Iraq when uh, they found out that the U.S. government was giving people money for anybody that would be a, a kind of terrorist. People were just snitching people on they didn't like. Yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. you? For I free mean, money? similar stuff with the social credit score. If your social credit score dips beneath a certain level, uh, whenever you call somebody, it shows that this person is an undesirable. And it's like, are you sure you want to go forward with this conversation? Because if you're associated with somebody that has a low credit score, it actually hurts your credit score. And who knows if they like help if they boost up your credit score if you rat somebody out. So yeah. there's all sorts of ways to do incentives and disincentives for all yeah. that stuff. We're already seeing that on Instagram, right? Where we, I want to click on maybe a post of yours. This happened yeah. to me the other day, and it's like, hey, this account is associated with yeah. some pretty pretty much bullshit, yeah. bro. Yeah. Are you sure you want to go here? And the next step from that is just making it what you said, See? where it actually affects you too. And the thing is, I've been there where it just tells me the same thing about time. Like, hey, this person so so, and I'm like, if I share this, do I get on their radar now? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's that simple. They told me like, hey, don't share this, and if I go and do what I want to do because I feel like I want to do it, now I'm on the radar. It's happening. It's happening all around us, and you know, a lot of people they like to do this frog in the boiling pot gradualism. So it's kind of hard to detect, especially when you pull back and you examine history like big picture wise, generationally. So now, you know, imagine the kids that are born now and they grew up wearing masks in school or even being afraid to be close. You can't hug one another or whatever. So I just want to encourage people that are listening right now. It may seem like some far fetched thing, but in reality, a lot of this stuff is already being implemented with the, in our, on our planet. A lot of it's being implemented in America, where I imagine most of the listeners are. And it's only a matter of time before these systems are rolled out completely, integrated with one another. Again, the digital ID, CBDCs, social credit score, and passport to where it's not going to be like a flash in a pan or you wake up one day and all of a sudden we're in a digital prison planet. Which is funny, by the way, because remember the big thing used to be FEMA camps, the FEMA camps, the regional FEMA camps. Now we don't even need the FEMA camps. Everyone's just imprisoning themselves through technology. But I just want people to really focus on where things are going and what the world is going to be like for our children or if you haven't had children yet or your grandchildren or just imagine three or four generations down the road kids that haven't even been born yet are going to grow up in a pretty nightmarish totalitarian system so i just am sharing that hopefully so we can light a fire under people's butts because there is a way out of this and like i said it's going to take massive action to pull it off and a lot of people but we've already assembled a ton of people and then there's a bunch of people that think like we do they're just not, not taking action so we can wake people up, right? Let's try to recruit as many people to the freedom cause. But more importantly, let's help to activate the people that already see a problem because we can focus on the problem till we're blue in the face. We can write articles, people can share videos, whatever. But ultimately we need to act and put these ideas into practice. And it's my hope that through decentralized voluntary, transparent systems, new types of organizing ourselves, new types of sharing money, doing business with one another, uh, we can show people that there's another way to live. We don't have to be dependent on government for peace and order. We don't have to be dependent on big tech and social media, big tech social media to connect with one another. We don't have to depend on YouTube to get the videos out. There's other platforms and we gotta build it. You know, if, the, if you build it, they will come. So. That's what I got to say. Yeah. Right. Hey, everybody, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends over there at Z-Biotics. Hey, Johnny, tell us a little bit about them. We're all busy, and we can't afford to waste any time stuck on the couch because we chose to have a few drinks the night before. 
Z-Biotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that is to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Z-Biotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. I know one of my closest friends, they've been trying Z-Biotics for a couple of weeks now and already swear by it. They felt great the next day, and they can't stop preaching it to everybody they meet. Give Z-Biotics a try for yourself. Go to Z, the letter Z, biotics, B-I-O-T-I-C-S dot com slash tinfoil. That's Z-Biotics dot com slash tinfoil to get 15% off your first order when you use the code tinfoil at checkout. Z-Biotics is backed with a 100% money-back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash tinfoil and use the code tinfoil at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. I, I want to go through some of the things you, you're, you're talking about. I mean, I want to get into some of the specifics of the five-day CBDC challenge. Um, but you're totally right. And, like, this show and myself is a great example of how I survive on, on alternative platforms. I don't know about I, – I mean, Twitter is going through its thing. I don't know where it ends. This Eliza Blue stuff uh, lets me know that there is still craziness going on, uh, on on Twitter with censorship of certain stories. I don't know how this chick has the power to censor. I don't know if you guys know the Eliza Blue story. She, full disclosure, she was on uh, Tim Fall Happy Four. She's super hot. She's got a fat peach. And... Um, she had positioned herself as a survivor of uh, sex trafficking, and more and more stuff is coming out that that may not be true. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, especially friends of this show, whether it's Zero Dark Tony or Chrissy Mayer, have been really going hard in the paint. Uh, a channel I listen to on YouTube called The Quarterling, Jeremy for The Quarterling, uh, he has been going hard. They have, there are people who have lost their Twitter accounts calling her out because she's friends with Elon Musk. And you go, but Elon, you are the one who's been talking about, we have to have a free a market of ideas. And now you're, 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 you're having all these people lose their Twitter accounts. But mm. with that said, I've been talking mad shit on Twitter and I haven't gotten in a lot of trouble. Now my, my likes have gone down significantly since the beginning when I was like, getting 700, 800 likes into 1,000. Now I'm only getting like 200, 300. But it's way, I think if I had to pick, they go, hey, man, you could pick one of these platforms right now. Which one would you do? I'd have to go with Twitter. I mean, they just gave us our old tinfoil hop uh, Twitter back. You were telling me about it. Yeah. You were hoping it was yours. I was hoping it was ask, for, ask for him I right keep now. asking. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, listen to me. I need to say, <laughs> add Sam Tripoli back. <laughs> Okay. I'll knock on his door. I'll play nice. I'll be nice. I won't call out fucking Pizzagate again. I know you got angry. Those people got angry about that shit. But he won't let Alex back either. You know, and it's like the, the, the real solution for this stuff to, to function and actually be a true uh, public square, as Elon likes to call it, it has to be decentralized. That's one of the reasons why Bitcoin is so powerful, because it's truly decentralized. There's no CEO and Satoshi Nakamoto, he, she, they or them. The, one of the best things they did was create this technology and then disappear because now there's nobody that we can all worship. And although people still worship the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto, but there's nobody the government can coerce or pressure. It takes out the human element. There's this new decentralized social media platform called Noster, N-O-S-T-R. I haven't experimented with it yet, but you basically like spin up a node and then all of these nodes connect with one another. So I'm, I'm a big Elon Musk fan and um, 
I like what he's doing. He's not perfect in any way. And he's got a lot of holes in his thinking, in my opinion. He's not a libertarian or an anarchist like I am, but I, he definitely inspires me. But nonetheless, I appreciate what he's doing with Twitter, but he's a flawed human being. And I think he's just putting his own personal bias on stuff, right? Like he said, I'm not letting Alex Jones back because he told all these lies about kids dying. So that's him implementing his bias. And he let some people back, didn't let other people's back. It's clear there's not a standard, but I'm like, man, you pay 47 billion for something. You could do whatever the hell you want with it. At least we're throwing more haymakers at the narrative. Well, his concern there though, don't you think is about advertising? Not not being able to get as many advertisers if he brings Alex Jones back. That's an that's an element at it as well for sure. It's a business at the end of the day, and apparently it was like on the verge of bankruptcy. Well, yeah, because it was basically an extension of the U.S. government and corporations yeah. and the banks to astroturf us with cultural Marxism to make the give the illusion that one side was way more powerful than they really were. And that the small <laughs> slogan for Twitter, what you just said there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like it is it is astroturfing. The the progressive left woke left is American ISIS. They are a small extremist group funded by government and bankers to destabilize. You can't come into America with an army. You'll get curb stomped. You have to do it slowly within. And listen. You know, Libs of TikTok is a wonderful account. I don't have a problem with the people themselves. What I have a problem with is, okay, if you're a teacher, now I got a problem, right? But you saying that into that doesn't, I don't have a problem with. You can say and do whatever you want, but it is the amplification of these people to give the illusion that this is common belief. And it is not. You know, it's like we've talked about those 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 vice uh, gender debates, and this one guy Griffin, who's a, a non-binary, whatever. You know, I don't know his his pronouns, but it's like if I went from New York City and drove outside of New York City to outside Los Angeles, how many days could I go before I see a Griffin anywhere? Days. Days. Days because it's not not even that far Riverside point zero zero percent of the population made to seem like it's a giant part of the pop even that that discussion that they had on there it was two it was nine guys two of them were gay five of them were what black. was this I, I missed this advice. what is it you know advice yeah, is, yeah advice but what but they it? did a male version not the, just a female version they did a male version of talking about masculinity you put in vice. Uh, masculinity debate. Uh, the, they did the feminism thing, and now you're talking about they did the they did the masculine okay. one, and they're like, we try to get a like a cross section of America, and this is who we can get, and it just happened to be five black guy. Nope, that's not it. Vice. Yeah, that's be it. a man. It's called be a man. Is that it? Be yeah. a man. And uh, it was a it was a I don't know if you just can Google it. search be a man. Uh, be a man and vice. So they're like, this is the what we could get. And I should do it. And uh, you go, you look at the panel, go to pictures, go to images. That's it right there. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was fine right there, too. Nope, that's not go no. back to what you, yeah, God, you had. God, this you is way it. harder than it needs to be. So don't click on the video. That's it. So this is it. So this is a, that what, <laughs> what, what is this? Person? What Vice and Hollywood want you believe America is. Oh, no. There's four guys on that picture. Are there four guys on that picture? Well, one binary four. guy, three guys. Now, full disclosure, one of the gay guys is Herschel Walker's son, who's extremely conservative. conservative. Yeah, yeah. He's, but he's, he still represents the gay population, right? So uh, the nine guys on there, you have two gay population. Here we go. Stop it right there. One's one, got a cowboy hat. One, two, three, four. Four of them are black, two of them are gay, two of them are Asian, and the guy in the back in that cowboy hat could be Latino and two white people. They're, this is what Hollywood wants you to believe America is. And it's not. Not at all. And it's I don't have a problem. 12, 12% black is what, is what America is. And what, Ameri what is it gay? Three? 
it's LGBT, not just gay. LGBT, all that whole range is somewhere in that three to five. five three to yeah. five. But according to this, this is two out of nine, which is almost 30%. This is all about astroturfing. This is all about manifesting for you to believe that this is America. And it's all cultural Marxism. And by discussing it... And gays uh, don't want this. Most of the gay people I talk to don't want this. I yeah, mean, you saw Andrew Sullivan on Mar this week crying about the, the way they're making kids make these decisions about their gender. It's yeah. Crazy. So let's get into this, man. I mean, any thoughts on this? John, I feel like we've just gone off. I do it every time. But I, I feel like... <laughs> no, we're just no, I'm with you. I mean, I have kids. Uh, they're homeschooled, and they do a homeschool co-op, but... I, <laughs> Whenever this stuff comes up to them, like all this weird woke stuff and the gender stuff, their response is just like, that's that's weird, dad, you know, and I, I do agree with you. There is an effort to normalize it. And it's like people can do what they please. And in any culture, or any society, there's naturally going to be different people and unique people or people that don't feel comfortable in their own skin. And that's fine. People should be able to show up and express themselves however they damn please. But it becomes really clear when there's an agenda at play. Uh, and I think project Veritas is doing a really good job of exposing some of this stuff. Like they did a video with this director at this really prestigious private school. And he's bragging how like a fifth grade class or fourth grade class or something, how they're like passing butt plugs around and he's not talking about it. Like it's some weird or controversial thing. He's excited and happy about it. And so I think the challenge too is when activist teachers come in, but there's also like, it's a challenge actually to trace the conspiracy. Cause oftentimes when we talk about conspiracy, there's like some central directed campaign, but it turns out there's all sorts of NGOs that finance curriculums and yes. they're the ones that are inserting all this weird woke stuff and all of the, uh, uh, what's the racist thing, the new racist thing, what's it called? Oh, uh, uh, critical, critical race, race theory. theory, critical race theory. And like, it's a problem. And again, I want to, you know, you pull back. And you see like, okay, it's slow gradualism, but as this gradualism gets put into place incrementally, generationally, before you know it, the entire culture and society is completely shifted. And of course, it's a lot easier to, to um, enslave a population whenever that true rigid masculinity, that warrior spirit that should be alive in most men Whenever it's just wiped out slowly but surely, it's easier to control and subvert the population when that happens. And I think that's a big part of why it's going down. Yeah, and it's also Malachian. And here we go with that word that everyone thinks I'm stuck on. But, you know, it's just this agenda like Moloch wants the children. Oh, and, Moloch. And that's yeah. what they want. They want the children. You get them early. You can flip everything but i also believe that the internet has allowed people to get a lot more information that they want and i don't know i believe in the law of duality i think there's light and dark and i think if they had it their way they would be locking everything down already maybe they have to do it in incrementally but this is all part of the brainwashing of america look at how griffin is like predominantly featured there they have two asians on this and you know what percentage of the united states asian americans make 6.2 coin this panel they're almost 30 percent i mean it's just it's like it's that is what america that's what hollywood wants you to think america is and it's not and i have no problems with that america outside of the presentation of that's what america is that is la san francisco and new york those are that's what that is. And they want you to believe that is the world because those are the cities they have on lockdown. Now, San Francisco's hemorrhaging because everyone's leaving. And mm. that might be a big part. And even where they're moving to Austin, that's hemorrhaging now. People are leaving Austin because it's gotten too woke. Nobody wants this shit. Nobody. And it's become a thing that you wish that, that normal people whisper about, you know, because they get they, like I have people that are kind of participate in that world. And then they can come to me and be like, dude, well, I don't know what's going on. man. With all this <laughs> shit. And it's it's just become it, it's gone so crazy that I think it's actually helping it to push people with common sense yeah. kind of toward 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 our direction. Yeah. I Every mean, action has an equal and opposite reaction. And the like. There's cities that are still obviously giant and they're the population centers. But uh, myself, I was born and raised in Austin. And after all the COVID lockdowns, 
I had to get the heck out of there because I would drive my ex-wife and I share custody and I would drive to meet her halfway because she lived north of Houston. So there would be this three hour drive, an hour and a half to the midpoint, an hour and a half back. And I noticed during the lockdowns and all the crazy masking, the further you got away from the big woke city, the fewer people gave a damn about COVID. And it's not like people are dropping dead in those country country towns. But you know, earlier I wanted to point out, because Sam, you were talking about, you know, the people in the city are the ones that are going to be affected most. There's this article that was written by a World Economic Forum contributor. Uh, and they they since scrubbed it from their website, but it was posted on Forbes as well. And everybody's familiar with this headline. It says, welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, yeah. and life has never been better. And the article's all about artificial intelligence, and we no longer own our homes. We just rent our homes, and we don't even own our goods and services. If we're not using it, somebody else uses it. Say, if we're not using our living room, why would I need to have it? Someone else can use the living room. I only go there to sleep. And But later in the article, there's something really fascinating that they say, and I think it's really telling. It says, my biggest concern is all the people who do not live in our city, those we lost along the way, those who decided that it became too much, all this technology, those who felt obsolete and useless when robots and AI took over big parts of our jobs. And this was written in 2016 before chat GPT was a thing that's literally taking people's jobs. Although, you know, it's just a victim thing to say that you can learn to use it. I'm anyway, sure. yeah. those, those who got upset with the political system and turned against it, they live different kinds of lives outside the city. Some have formed little self-supplying communities. Others just stayed in the empty and abandoned houses in small 19th century villages. So they're recognizing the World Economic Forum is recognizing this this kind of split, this fracturing of the general public, the masses going along to get along, following the latest agenda. Their kids are being indoctrinated in schools. And then there's those of us that are like, wait a second, this is not right. And so one of the things we do in our in our movement is like we're really encouraging people to get the heck out of the city because this central bank digital currency, the surveillance state, the 5G smart city, uh, Internet of Things, it's all going to be very, 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 very strong and powerful and affect people's lives way more when you're in the big city than if you got the country life, the farmer's market, and you got a bunch of freedom people living in the small town or on the outside of the small town. So I think that's a big part of escaping a lot of this. And we'll feature that uh, briefly in our challenge. That'll be part of one of the days. All right, man. We're having depopulation problems. And you know what? You know who's trying to help us? Blue Chew. That's right. Blue Chew. Let me tell you a little bit about Blue Chew, my friends. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up. Go to BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. Okay. Buy a chewable tablet for a fraction of the cost. That's right. And you can take it anytime, day or night, so you, you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at Blue Chew, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your pres prescription within days. Best part, all done online. So there's no visit to the doctor office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA, USA, and prepared and shipped directly to your door in a discreet package, okay? I love Blue Chew. These guys love Blue Chew. Who knows where we would be without Blue Chew, okay? We love you, Blue Chew. Man, your boners are the best boners. Number one boner, Blue Chew. Okay, so Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex, okay? Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. So here's what we got. Special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code TINFOIL at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code TINFOIL to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Eddie, Eddie Bravo talks about all the time about his thoughts are that a lot of these, like, the hills have eyes, the serial killers in the forest. It's all about scaring you from living in, the, <laughs> in, in, in these small communities. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And like all all the stuff about big cities are always in the future. 
Uh, it's going to be crazy. But now it's all sex in the city and all that <laughs> stuff and that and all the fun that you have in the cities and all the money that can be made yeah. and everything. You know, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, man, you know, we're, we're running and gunning on Wall Street and shit like that. Not that Wolf of Wall Street was a positive, but it's still like... Can they still play that narrative, though? What? Like sex in the city and all, like Wolf of Wall Street. That was... That was when it was cool to live in the city. I don't want to live in New York no more. I don't even want to live in downtown or, or Hollywood anymore. Ten years ago, I thought it was cool. Yeah. Like when you used to watch, uh, what was that show, Friends and uh, yeah. High Made Your Mother? Da, 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 yeah, it da, looked da, da, fun. Da, da, da. Yeah, now it's not. that's, that's not what dumb. it is. Well, it's also, I mean, <laughs> even back then in the 90s, it was so so non-representative of what it's like to live in a city. Those, those, those people all were in the top 1% of 1% right. as far as income. Those apartment, those palatial apartments they lived in, mm. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. If, you, I, if you're a millionaire, yeah, yeah, that's how you live in New York. I have if you're friends not. who live in the big city through either in their late 30s, entering their 40s, and they just struggle to pay their bills. And mm. I go, at what point does big city living outweigh your misery? Of like not only I like so when you go, man, that sounds like an awful dystopia. You'll own nothing. There's people living on all the time, just so they can get pizza at three in the morning. Which now that is a good uh, cultural benefit. Well, but. I do get it, but like everything else is just <laughs> like misery, crime. I mean, crime is like skyrocketing, but people don't care. Don't turn on Citizen. Because they would, oh, dude, I don't even know how you're on Citizen right now. No, I turn off the alert. Yeah. But it's Citizen's scary. even like fitting into what John's talking about, which is this constant propaganda yeah. to lower your vibrations and raise your anxiety, which makes you more easily manipulated. They can manipulate you way more if you're scared of everything. Because you'll give up freedoms for safety. They've discovered that. People don't give a fuck about freedoms. They just want quote unquote safety, even though they don't get any safety. Yeah. Yeah. That was Thomas Jefferson said, I'd rather have uh, dangerous liberty than peaceful servitude. I mean, that's what's coming. And it's more and more important that we find other people that care about freedom and we start doing business with them, voting with our dollars. And so one of the things we're going to teach in this challenge, we're going to teach people how to use Bitcoin and Monero, right? Monero especially. Bitcoin is great and it's mostly uncontrollable. So you can have money and wealth. You can send money and wealth to anybody. Like my other company, I sell Kratom, right? We talked about this briefly on their program. I can't accept credit cards. Um, because the federal government pressures the credit card companies, they pressure the banks, right? Because a lot of people use Kratom instead of prescription pain medicine. Or my wife, for example, quit taking Adderall and quit drinking in large part thanks to Kratom. So I can't do credit cards. It's a major burden for my business. But I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to teach my clients to use Bitcoin or to use e-check, right? To circumvent the credit cards. So the idea is we learn to use Bitcoin, but more importantly, learn to use Monero because Monero is completely private. If you make a transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, it'll show that this address sent Bitcoin exactly how much when they sent it to this address. Now, if your identity is tied to that address, which happens when you sign up on Coinbase, you got to scan your driver's license. It could be known that you sent the money here and then it can even track where it went after that. Right. There's ways to buy Bitcoin privately and we'll teach folks how to do that in the challenge. But this cryptocurrency Monero is completely private. All of the transactions are obscured. Who sent what to whom, what address, how much was sent, when it was sent, what the new balance is on each account, totally private. But we're gonna teach people how to set that up. And then more importantly, we're gonna teach them how to use it. A lot of people just buy Bitcoin to try, you know, number go up, they just wanna make money. What's really important is that we learn to use this practically. And then on top of that, we're going to help tie people in to already existing counter economic networks. That's counter establishment economics. It's like operating outside the system. It's under the table. It's doing business with your buddy and not reporting it to the man. And so the idea is as they're setting up the CBD system, CBDC system, which is gonna make it easier for them to control, manipulate and coerce people. They're gonna tie the woke agenda and all this green fascism stuff to your money, we are going to be setting up 
relationships, networks. So as they implement this, we're already decoupled from all their BS and we can already meet our basic wants and needs outside of their system. And so I'm encouraging people to start laying the groundwork now because you don't want to find yourself in this totalitarian despotic future, dystopian future movie, and not have these rails set up for us to connect with one another. So and that's why I'm tr- trying to sound an alarm bell before it's too late. And it's already coming down the pike pretty quick. So you're telling me that, that there's a way that I can buy something on Amazon through my Bitcoin, my Ethereum, or my Mana that you could show me? Because like through buy through Amazon, well, you need a credit card. Like you want can can you get a credit card with Bitcoin? Because that's the thing. Like people want to buy shit on Amazon, and you can't with Bitcoin. Is there a way to yeah, do that? Sure, sure. So you can buy Amazon gift cards with Bitcoin. Now, of course, that's still most of the time still going to be tracked because you have to have an Amazon account if you're going to have something shipped to yourself, right? So you're yeah. already kind of revealing your identity there. But they do have crypto based debit cards and credit cards where it withdraw. Like, so you have, say you have half of Bitcoin, right? Like, uh, what is it? $11,000. Bitcoin's like 22 K right now. It's gone up since 16 or 17, just this past week or so you, so you have like six, 11,000 bucks in your account. And then when you use the card, it automatically sells that Bitcoin and allows you to pay. Now this is great. It's not the credit card it's still tied to your identity. So, I'm not trying to claim we're going to be able to have everything that we have now, all those conveniences, but oftentimes a lot of people, not only do they give up their liberty for security, but they give up their liberty and privacy for convenience, myself included. I love Amazon. I love the prime thing. Right. But what's really important is like food. How are we going to eat? All right, let's find the local farmer. Let's go to the local farmer's market. Let's uh, use our buddy, um, Texas Slim, he's got this beef initiative where he goes and meets all these cattle ranchers and you can buy beef using Bitcoin. They ship it to you and it's frozen when you get it. It's just important to have at least that basic stuff because there could come a time, everybody's using the CBDC and it's like, all right, not a big deal. It's the same process when I use my credit card, but then maybe there's another and now they're like, you got to take our updated super technological mRNA vaccine, and if you don't, we're going to stop you from doing business. That's what the mark of the beast said. It said like, you ha- every man has a mark, the number 666, and it can shut you out of money in commerce. That's essentially what it says, paraphrasing of course. So I just want people to at least have the option now. So sure, a lot of people are gonna just go along to get along because of the convenience. But if they're like, you gotta do A or B, or you can't spend this money, I at least want people to have the option at that point to say, you know what, to hell with that. I already got this going on. It's, my life may change a little bit, but I'm not going to buy into their system. I'm not going to enslave my children, for example. Now, some people are going to be stoked. They want to exist outside the system entirely, but a lot of people have a normal life and they don't have the time to bother with or whatever. So I would at least hope that folks can have an exit plan if they do really turn the heat on, which they already have. People lost their job for not taking their stupid I agree. I totally agree. What about, um, so you've talked a little bit about the private sector and digital currency. Do you think it's possible to do like transactions on your iPhone or your Google phone and not be tracked? So Android and Apple, I actually learned this from my friend Ramiro Romani. He actually sells a de-Googled phone that has all these great apps on it. You can find it at abovephone.com, abovephone.com. And so there's this concept called telemetry. That's the sending of a signal to an outside source. And so when you look, look up the research and on their own records, Google and Apple are constantly doing telemetry, just sending data outside of your phone, pinging cell towers, pulling all sorts of messages and all sorts of stuff to their central servers. And so this above phone, it's a D Google Android phone, essentially. Um, it does none of that, right? So they can track and trace this and that here and there. There's ways around it. You can connect to a VPN, perhaps virtual private network that disguises your IP address where you can get your hands on one of these phones and the phone will really uh, avoid all of that external signal. And so Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is just one piece of the puzzle. It's not by all means the only solution. Like I got started in alternative currency 
maybe 10 or 15 years ago, encouraging people to use silver dimes, junk silver before 1964 is 10% silver. But on top of that, you can barter. Barter is such an easy way to avoid the man scrutiny as well. We need to have the digital technology so we can do business with one another online outside of their purview. But then on top of that, we also have to have those face-to-face relationships and some sort of barter currency or, or whatever it may be. Different communities will have different solutions. But the point is we got to have something. Let me ask you something about this above phone. Do I have to be on a T-Mobile network? Like- so you can, you can take your SIM card on AT&T, whatever, Verizon, and pop it in the uh, phone and it'll work right away. Uh, or you could simply use it when you're connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, this is my buddy. I mean, my my I might buy I one. one. My my wife has one, and like the reason I didn't want one because I was like, oh man, it's not going to be very convenient. Back to that convenience thing, and there's going to be some apps that I can't use. She uses it just fine. The only thing that she struggles with is that is the map program, right? So obviously, if you want to be private, you don't want to use Google Maps. But other than that, she's she's not the most technologically advanced person she's probably listening to me from the office next door but she's actually done a pretty good job with this is it. a fully customized os like they created their own operating yeah. system completely i think it uses something called graphene os yeah. but they customized it and they put all these sweet apps and stuff on it oh. it comes pretty decked out especially if you buy one of these fancy ones and it's not it doesn't interact with like the google play store or anything like that right there's no app store that in the traditional sense is that right so you can add an, the Google Play Store, or there's a couple that have a lot of the Google Play Store apps, but it's not the Google Play Store. Okay. There's even some that are just for like techie programmer kind of stuff and privacy stuff. So you'd be surprised. There's all sorts of apps that people have developed that are purposefully made to protect your privacy. Cool. All right. I'm interested. I might buy one. I might have a coupon code, Live Free. Live free if, if there's an opportunity to put in a coupon code. We'll figure it out. We'll just send it to us. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah. So, so uh, I'm all about getting out of the banks. You know, I've had to open up. A, I have a bank account, a major bank, and now I've opened up a second one. So I don't go over the threshold that the government will cover your account. Oh, I thought you were trying to like avoid what happened to Kanye. Well, I'm just trying to diversify. I don't want to have just one, my money in one bank. So if, yeah, something that happens That's like hard. that, I'm trying yeah. to mix, mix it up. But I would love to not have to use traditional uh, systems. Right. And I think that everybody in the crypto world, the biggest thing they have to do is create practical applications. Now, when like when I talk crypto i always hear all the people in the conspiracy world that this is and and maybe it's true that this is a way to enforce uh the new world order agenda what's your thoughts i think i probably asked you this last time john but i feel like we should ask again yeah 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 so so i started i learned about bitcoin in fact, the very first time, one of the first times I learned about Bitcoin, it was my friend that's an agorist, right? He's completely out this, outside the system. This is 2011. And he was like, hey, you should mine Bitcoin. That's when you could do it on a computer, on a laptop still. And that's when the, the block reward that every approximately 10 minutes, a new block gets added to the blockchain. The blockchain is the decentralized distributed ledger. It has all the transactions that have ever taken place. And every 10 minutes, a new block gets added. That's the collection of the transactions from the approximately previous 10 minutes. Well, every time a new block gets added, whatever miner or group of miners, those are the people that verify the transactions, they're rewarded with Bitcoin. That's how Bitcoin gets created. Well, back then it was 50 Bitcoin every approximately 10 minutes. And I remember a lesson for folks. I always try to take lessons and stuff in life. Everyone should do that, right? Because then when crap happens, we're anti-fragile, right? So we got adversity, we got struggle, we got pain, we got hardship, we make a mistake, but we actually learn from it and improve our lives moving forward. But anyway, I told him, oh, you know, I'm just so busy. Maybe I'll do it when I learn more about it, right? <laughs> so the, the lesson is to always at least have some bandwidth to take on a new opportunity, to not miss the opportunity. But either way, I started learning about more about it and got real passionate about it. And um, 
became an activist and an evangelist. But for the folks that think it's the New World Order, a lot of people point to this night this 1990s NSA report on digital currency using cryptography. But really, it's missing a lot of the key features of Bitcoin, like this decentralized distributed ledger, uh, proof of work technology, which is how they verify the transactions. And you actually actually have to put a lot of energy into the system in order to verify these transactions. That makes it very challenging for it to be hacked or for someone to do a fraudulent transaction. But in my studies of Bitcoin, I studied the genesis of these digital currencies, of these cryptocurrencies and there's this group there's this there's this movement called cypherpunks and so in the 90s as the internet was starting to come uh into being and becoming more popular these techno geeks computer scientists were like hey we need to have a money for the internet we need to be able to send money to folks without the government cracking down on us so they started experimenting with all these technologies hash cash e-gold Um, And there was all these key figures and they kept on trying, but they couldn't solve two key problems. One of them was called double spending. Right. So if you have a text file or a picture on a computer, all you got to do is right click duplicate right now. You have two of the same file. So if you're doing a digital money, obviously you don't want someone to be able to replicate the money over and over. Uh, And then the other problem was decentralization. So one of the popular digital currencies was called e-gold. And it turns out that the government indicted the creator of e-gold because people were using e-gold for money laundering and for legal purposes, right? So you can't have a centralized authority or a corporation or a company or a person that creates it because all the government has to do is pressure them. So Bitcoin solved these two problems. It solved double spending because there's a record of who has what Bitcoin and it's stored on like 30, 40, 50,000 different computers. So when I send Sam some Bitcoin, it gets recorded that I sent him Bitcoin from my address to his address, and it gets recorded on all the computers and all the computers to verify like, okay, John actually had that Bitcoin because he was received it from this person who received it from this person. This is a valid transaction. If someone's like, actually, if Sam, you're like, no, actually he sent me two Bitcoin, they would go back and see that wasn't the case. That's not the consensus on all the computers. And of course they solved the decentralization problem Uh, because there's no person that owns it or controls it. It's distributed on all these computers. So that's my long way of saying it's very, very, very likely, although we can't know for sure, but it's most likely that Bitcoin grew out of this movement because a lot of the key pieces, Bitcoin essentially is a technology that pulled from this evolution of digital money and somebody or a group of people finally figured it out. Like, Eureka, this is how we can do it. And then it took off. I think that is far more likely than the New World Order created it. And most people that are just like, it's New World Order money, they haven't taken the time to actually look at what it really is, nor have they traced this Genesis story. So I don't think it's New World Order money. Um, That being said, just like a gun, it's a tool. It's a benign tool um, that can be used for evil, you know, coercing someone, governments, forcing people, killing people, or it could be used for good, defending yourself, uh, uprising a revolution, overthrowing a tyrannical government. Just the same with this blockchain technology. A lot of the digital ID stuff may be tied to the uh, a blockchain computer, blockchain technology. So we need to be cautious about that, but we shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater because ultimately Bitcoin and Monero, for example, the privacy cryptocurrency, are incredibly important tools in our tool belt for creating freedom and opting out of their systems. So I want to encourage conspiracy theorists not to just discount it, to look a little bit deeper, because at the end of the day, you're doing yourself a great disservice if you don't learn to use this technology. It's going to be the only way, in my view, it's going to be the only way we can do business online outside of their system. Do you think uh, cyberpunks were Natosha Sagamoto or whatever, however you say his name? Do you think they they were part of it? Who do you think he is? Do you think he's one person? The government obviously said not New World Order. Well, I mean, his Who name do you think is, he is somewhat now? people broken down like Satoshi Nakamoto, what his name means. And there's in some c- centralized intelligence into that. Um, I don't know, man. I, I also believe this, man. That And Johnny, we've talked about this and but sometimes they create stuff and it gets away from them. A great example is social media, right? 
Like they create social media and people are like, whoa, I could put conspiracy videos on here and all this <laughs> logical evidence to contrary to what's going on in the media. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> to the point that they're actually destroying their brands now. Like Facebook's hemorrhaging. YouTube is hemorrhaging. Google is in deep shit with this chat GPT. Like sometimes it gets away from them. And, you know, there's just guys out there that will have to create some kind of value to females <laughs> that they'll create some technology that will be attractive to women. And they create these things that are, are, are pushbacks to the, the elite's authoritarianism. So I think Bitcoin, even if you want to go, okay, at the, at the, at the biggest, it was, it was created for this. And maybe there was a hand in it. But what we're seeing right now is really smart people creating counters to what could be the digital, the digital prison, in my yeah. humble opinion. No, that's a good way to look at it. And a lot of people, especially in our conspiracy community, I think they give too much credit to the government, deep state, shadow government, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, I always like to point this out to try to give people hope. Like, sure, there's this massive totalitarian state and a lot of people are completely indoctrinated and brainwashed. But in order for them to carry out their agenda, they have to use darkness and deception and manipulation and violence and coercion. For us to carry out our agenda, we just have to shine in the light of, of goodness, right? We just got to be good people. Our freedom is the natural default, e even though, you know, dog eat dog and in the wild, there's this pecking order that's natural. The way that they're carrying out their stuff, it's a deviation from the norm. And that's why they got to try so hard at it. And that's why intrinsically people are just kind of like, this doesn't make sense. Now, I think a lot of the government school indoctrination kind of takes away our internal guide. Uh, and that's where cognitive dissonance comes in. And then the big challenge with all this woke stuff, too, is you have people like we were saying earlier that want to speak out, that agree with our controversial opinions, but they don't want to get canceled. I mean, I had friends from high school at the height of the stuff. I was just throwing haymakers at the agenda and all the stupid numbers. And if you look at the age of the people that are dying and, you know, most people are completely safe whatsoever. Um, I had people from high school message me privately. Hey, thanks so much for speaking up. I would just get in so much trouble if I spoke my mind. So, you know, our side is the truth. Our side is the natural state of things. And the other side is playing catch up. They're freaked out. They're like these totalitarian megalomaniacs that are insecure. They don't want to lose power, but they're losing it day by day. They're a shattered mess. And these decentralized systems. And the internet even, it's like, we didn't have this before. It was just like, this is what we say is fact. And if you don't believe us, or if you speak out against our authority, we're going to draw and quarter you in the public square. And, you know, even um, Thomas Paine with the outbreak of the American Revolution, they had to print out pamphlets and then go door to door handing them out. You can publish, this show is going to be heard by so many different people. You got your blog on the internet, whatever, Odyssey, videos that can't be taken down because it's on a blockchain. We've entered a new era, and I think at this point, the enemies of freedom are kind of shaking in their boots. But we need people to recognize that, though, because I'm a big, firm believer in the law of attraction. And for the people that see this monolithic new world order that's all powerful, that's the reality that they're going to exist in. But for me, like I got my freedom crew, we regularly have 50, 60, 70 people show up. We got gardens going. We're having these grand events with 500 people in person, reaching tens of thousands of people on a live stream. That's my reality. And it's just people need to get out from behind the computer more and go out and do stuff. It really makes a world of difference. I agree, man. I agree, dude. Um Let's get into, I mean, you got your freedom cell, you just talked about it. What is uh, uh, agorism and why is it a solution? Okay, cool. So in the challenge, and again, folks can sign up for free. We're doing this for free. It's five days, the February 6th to the 10th. 
Um, you can sign up at cbdcoptout.com. On day one, James Corbett is going to present what CBDCs are with an emphasis on what are their vulnerabilities? How can we exploit them, right? So the problem is central bank digital currencies, surveillance, money, you can be shut out of the money. They'll try to change our behavior, social credit scores tied to your money and your ability to buy and sell goods and services. But the real solution to all the work we're doing with the Freedom Cell Network, people can join us at freedomcells.org, Freedom Cells, C-E-L-L-S. Uh, all the solutions that we're going to present in the CBDC opt-out challenge, they're all part of this strategy called agorism. And this is something that was coined by a guy named Samuel Edward Conkin III. He wrote this book called The New Libertarian Manifesto. And essentially, it's revolutionary market anarchism. So, you know, if you have like the Libertarian Party and they're like, let's all go vote and let's try to get our people elected. Well, Samuel Edward Conkin used to be a Libertarian Party member, but he started growing disillusion. He's like, this is basically just a circle jerk. We're not really getting anything done. We're not creating real freedom. So he's like, if we want, he said this specifically, and I quote, the consistent application of the philosophy of liberty is what brings about the free society. So it's not just philosophizing, reading books. It's not going out and voting and knocking on doors or yelling at government buildings. It's creating what he calls counter economic systems. So, you know, you had the counter culture in the 60s, yeah. like bucking the system, anti-war, yeah. hippies. Yeah. Well, this is counter establishment economics and essentially it's underground economies. It's buying things secretly without the government knowing it's a handshake relationship where you don't claim it on your taxes. Right. And so the idea and I like to say agorism is or agorism. I think you actually say agorism, but I'm, I'm a rebel. So I say agorism. Agorism is uh, it's not competing with the system. I'm sorry, it's not competing within the system, like vote for me, I'm competing with this other guy, it's competing with the system. And so me and Derek also call it exit and build strategy. So it's like, we got a problem, we don't like this banking system, we don't like this healthcare system, we don't like the public school system. So rather than trying to reform these systems, we're going to exit these systems and build better systems. Or, and when I say exit, like, we're talking about true anarchism, totally opting out, like being a total sovereign person. You're completely free. Now, that comes with risk, especially for someone that has built wealth, that has land, a mortgage, a job, a 401k. So the idea is let's build these systems now. Let's get enough people to start participating in these systems. So when we are able to take care of ourselves, provide for our common wants and needs, we can then exit. So it's either exit and build or build to transition to the exit. But that's what agorism is in a nutshell. It's opting out of the system. It's defying the man. And it's getting a lot of people together in a counter economic cadre uh, to make that more successful. And there needs to be a lot of people. When we did the, what was the, the, the comedy thing that we did in Texas? Yeah. They needed a lot of help. Like when we got there and they were low on foods, I looked at town and I was like, bro, this is like the cities are important because it just wasn't, it wasn't enough people to, to put it together. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. There's a lot of missing to that. Well, there's like, every, there need, there's going to be some blanks that need to get filled, obviously. And that's why you need more and more people, more and more people. Everyone has a skill set. They bring people in. I think, you know, like I say it all the time on the show and everyone's like, you always say the same thing. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> that's the show. But it's like the big lie, the matrix was that the people who opted out of the matrix lived miserable lives and people, there's a lot of people, including myself, that get very scared at the notion of of leaving the convenience of the big city. But what's happening is that the inconvenience of the big city is starting to outweigh mm. the convenience of the big city. Yeah. Right? And they're starting to take away the things that make the big city fun. Right? Like the, mm -hmm. the entertainment underbelly of, uh, of outlaws that would come to the big city and you'd find crazy events in art districts and they would be pushing the envelope and, you know, bringing truth to power. Those guys, people got ran out. 
and it's all been hijacked, limited high, limited hangouts of children. So when we go to these events, and that's only the second year, it's going to be no, growing so that, all you the said, time. Yeah, it's gonna get, but, you, but like you said, you need to start setting it up now. So when when you're ready to exit, you ha- you're set up for it to go. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is like some people might want to go and find their own little place all by themselves. I don't think that's the answer either. I think the answer is finding a community and join that community, understand the game that's getting played there. And by game, I mean the rules so you can contribute to Mm -hmm. the community and not go in there and try to change it because nobody's doing it. That's my biggest problem. Like, you want to join this movement, join the movement. Don't go in there and then change the movement to fit how you see the world. Well, Austin. Well, Austin, I mean, everything. (laughs) Like, you know, it's like you have people going, I want to be, a pre- I want diversity in this. So you get a job and then you go, we got to change everything. No, you want it in. Here's your in. Play by the same rules everybody else is. I didn't want it. What's the name of that book real quick you just mentioned? Uh, New Libertarian Manifesto. New Libertarian Manifesto. There used to be a website, agorism.info, but I don't know if anybody's keeping it up anymore. But this is a movement. This guy passed away, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, uh, maybe in the maybe in the 2000s, actually, uh, which I guess is 20 years ago. But it's pretty cool that it was this, like, obscure strategy. And um, it's since grown into a whole movement uh, with everybody, like a lot of people really implementing this stuff. Um you can just search new libertarian manifesto PDF You can buy the book on Amazon, but there's a free PDF for everyone to read. And it lays out this strategy and also talks about in the end, it has like the different phases of agorism. And so at the beginning, it'll be phase zero, which is zero density agorism. It's just all statism. It's all government control. There's nobody working outside the system. I should say that that was never the case, actually, because there's always been a very strong underground. And there was a study done. I don't know the exact number, but they tried to put a number like a GDP on the underground under the books economy. And it's like substantial, crazy, crazy, giant amount of money. And like the more the government squeezes the bigger the counter economy grows 100%. like in, in the soviet union there's a lot of people doing business underground not philosophically but because they had to do it to survive and so i'm making the case like we're going towards this digital communism and that cultural marxism is all a part of that right uh the great reset is eco digital communism it's a ugly it's like fascism too so, like, let's put the pieces in place like a big chess game, right? The grand chess board, like the big new Brzezinski called it. Let's put our pieces in place now. So as this stuff gets rolled out, we're not completely crushed by it. But he goes to these phases, and I'd like to think we're we're well along our way. And eventually there'll be pockets of neighborhoods where people are outside the system, right? And a lot of people will say, like, oh, well, that's escapism. That's retreatism. We need to vote. We need to reform the system. I think nothing could be further from the truth. What we're trying to do is show people there's another way to live. And the more of us that participate, the more money that comes into this outside the system space, the more innovation, the more big thinkers, big names, big influencers that do, uh, the better it will grow. And like you said, I think that's pretty pretty good what you're saying about how we're in the city for the conveniences, but now it's starting to get pretty damn inconvenient. And if I could suggest a middle path, A lot of people work in the city, like you said, the arts and the entertainment, it's all great, great restaurants, family, friends. A good middle path is if you have the means, which is why money is so important, right? You you can buy an acre, two acres on the outskirts of town, 45 minutes, an hour away, or maybe even in another state, right? And then you pop an RV on there or a motor home or whatever. That's where you put your bug out supplies. Every once in a while, you take the sun out hunting out there or whatever, or you just go hang out there to get the lay of the land, but then you can have in the city, same lifestyle, enjoy the arts, go to work. You got this other place you're slowly but surely building up. And then if crap hits the fan or if the cities become way too authoritarian, at least you have a place to go. Not to mention land is a decent place to put your money. It's a scarce commodity. And historically, even if there's ups and downs, it's always going up. I got to ask you about your day four. You said there's some side hustles to earning counter like counter income. Can you give me like what an example of a side hustle in in the crypto sure, community sure. would be? Because I mean, who doesn't want some side money? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like we have three companies and we're going to be starting a third, a fourth here pretty soon. And I'm very passionate about it. Although man, it's, it's hard sometimes like this, my studio, we're moving it, we're expanding it to the back space so we can do in-person events. In fact, when we do the challenge, it'll be my first time doing it back there. So we got a stage I can stand up and walk around, it'll be a cool experience. But there's times when I'm sitting in this exact seat right here, like 9 PM at night, just like, so overwhelmed and emotional and like, Oh my God, there's so, I like have like 15 people that work with me full time or part time. And I got to pay the bills and these people are dependent on me, you know, like the weight of that is pretty substantial. But um, the point I'm making with this is that entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And a lot of people in my audience at Live Free Academy are older folks. I don't know what it is. I, I always attract older people, especially older women. But, um, you know, and I'm like, you got to be an entrepreneur, start a business, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people are like, man, I've been working my whole life. I'm retired. I don't want to start a business. I just want to relax and make sure that I don't get crushed by this system. So that was kind of an insight for me. Like, okay, everybody doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. But a lot of people, I think everybody should at least have some outside the system income. Because the folks that are on Social Security the folks that are existing solely on their retirement account money, that is most definitely going to be central bank digital currency. Not to mention it's all whimsical up and down manipulated by wall street interest rates from the fed or whatever. So I think it's important for people to have some little trickle, even if it's 500 bucks a month, a thousand bucks a month, that gives them the option to say, now that the central bank digital currency is tied to a digital ID or an implantable microchip, who knows, I at least have this option I can now put most of my energy into, but you know, there's all sorts of different things people can do. A lot of times it's like, what do you, it's like, are you passionate about something? You have a lot of information about something and then is there a market for it? So this is something that um, my kid start wants to start this business and we were about to, but something that's real simple is like, you just sell starter plants. You get a little tray. This is the one that comes to mind. I talked about in this make more money masterclass I did, but you get the tray and then you have your little plastic starter things and then you just plant the seed and then give it two weeks to a month or so. And before you know it, you got a little starter plant. It costs next to nothing. And then you can sell it at the farmer's market or sell it to friends. Um, coaching information businesses have very low uh, overhead. Anyone can get started on those. Um, you can start a blog collect an email list, right? So you do a lead magnet, like download my free report on whatever niche podcasting. Here's my free report on the top five things to do when starting a podcast. And then you give away the report, people send you their email address. You're starting to accumulate an email list, right? And then you can either sell your own information product or you can do affiliate stuff and sell somebody else's info product. But I mean, there's all sorts of options. And the cool thing about side hustle is, you have your main, your basic, your universal basic, you have your, your main income from your 40 hour a week job or whatever. And by the way, for people that are like, I already have a 40 hour a week job. I don't have a lot of time. There's plenty of time beyond that. Right. Or even on your lunch break, but you have this main income. You don't have to abandon that. In fact, I would encourage people not to abandon that, but on the side, Saturday, Sunday, maybe an hour in the morning, an hour at night, you can experiment with stuff. And so, experience is the greatest teacher. So maybe you launch a little side hustle and it doesn't really pick up. It's too much work than it's worth. So you let it go and you try something else, but maybe it does pick up. And now you start putting a little bit extra energy into it, extra time into it. Before you know it, you may find yourself in a position where you're starting to make a decent amount of income from the side hustle. You can decide to abandon the corporate job that you hate and you hate your boss or whatever, and then lean all your energy into the side hustle but there's all sorts of options and we're going to teach people how they can do that, how they can link up with other freedom people that are willing to barter or use crypto outside the system. And then how we can leverage business directories and entire communities of people that are ready and willing to trade with you outside of the system. So you're saying that we should use a cold wallet, put all of our crypto on there. Well, yeah. So cold. So there's hot wallets, which is like, the wallet on your computer. And for folks not aware of 
Bitcoin wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet is a piece of software mostly that allows you to send and receive crypto and it generates public addresses, which is like your account number, although you can have an infinite number of them. And you can even create a new address for every transaction. So they're not all on one address because if someone discovers that's your address and you're only using one, they can see how much money you have or all the transactions you've ever made. So a, a wallet software does that. You can have one on your phone, you can have one on your computer. Some people like to do what's called cold storage, or you could do a hardware device. We're actually giving away one. We're giving away prizes during the thing, but you got to show up live, right? So we're going to give away an above phone I was talking about earlier. We're going to give away some straight Bitcoin and Monero. We're going to give away one of these Trezor hardware wallets. So a hardware wallet like this, every address, that's like your account number, has a private key. Whoever has the private key can unlock access to the crypto on the address. Now, when you buy Bitcoin or crypto on Coinbase, you don't have the private address. Only Coinbase does the private key. So you don't even really own your crypto. In fact, one of their recent filings with the SEC. Uh, like, no, yeah, is that on their exchange or their wallet too? Because people say. No, so they, yeah, yeah. That's a great thing to point out. So they actually have a wallet software. That one's what's called non-custodial. So it's non-custodial when you have the private key and no one else does. So they do have a wallet, but if you're on coinbase.com, they have an exchange and a wallet built in. That one is a custodial wallet. You don't own that crypto. You don't control it. If they go bankrupt, then you're going to be one of their secured creditors and you're not going to get your crypto back unless it's like years down the road. And it's just a portion. That's what people are dealing with FTX now and Celsius recently. So yeah, heard about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hot wallet is like sending and receiving. It's connected to the internet. A cold wallet is maybe you set up a wallet on a computer that was never connected to the internet. You generate a QR code or an address, and then someone sends you Bitcoin. The comp it never even has to go to the internet. But if you have that private key that's tied to the public address they sent Bitcoin to, you can just have it on a piece of paper. You could print it out, and now it's cold. So I'd say a cold wallet is one that's not connected to the internet. It's basically just storing your Bitcoin. I hope that makes sense. I was no, trying it to does. communicate. It it does. It, does. it totally makes sense. And because, you know, I am a victim of Celsius. Oh, um, man. Yeah. I mean, they allowed me into a program I wasn't qualified for. And they jacked my things with Johnny's fucking smirk over there. What? You, I lost money, too. What are you looking at me for? Yeah, you're smirking, dog. Um, no, I'm laughing because I did the same thing. And uh, I mean, it's probably going to be 15 years till I get my money. And I just have this feeling that I, the money's going to come right when I need it. So, like, I'm going to be like fucking buying. I'm like, I need money. They're like, here's your cash. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Sweet, sweet Lord. But uh, yeah, it's totally done. I mean, like. And they can keep most of my coins on there. Just give me my my uh, my uh, Bitcoin and my XRP, which I know is the They're bank. giving you back cash. You know that, right? Not coin. Yeah, I know. And okay. we're talking like years? Well, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 the, people, years, right? the people with uh, Mt. Gox, MT Gox, uh, Mt. Gox they, they are just getting their money back, hopefully, this year. They're hoping. And that was how many years ago? Six, yeah, eight, yeah, seven. But is it the whole amount, or is it like pennies on the dollar? Or well, Satoshi? they're not getting pennies. The... The Mt. Gox guys, they're getting a, a chunk, I think. But uh, like now, I think they are buying Celsius debt f at like a, I don't know, is it twenty percent? Yeah, I'm like not. That? I'd rather yeah. get well, nothing back. I'm gonna be honest with you. You can I, they're like on the market, you on the debt market, you can sell your Celsius yeah, debt for something like 20, less than twenty percent. So. Yep, not happening. And Suck then, it. And then, but question, like, let's say, well, do you remember what Bitcoin was at when you lost your Celsius? I mean, it was super high. Okay, well, and, well, the reason Celsius is fucked because Bitcoin plummeted. But like, what? What if like seven years from now, when they're going to give you your money back, Bitcoin's super huge? Are they giving you the price on it when it was there, when they took it from you, when it lost at its That's lowest? A great like, Johnny, what, what do you think it was? Um, I I think it will be what it was, but I don't think it was that high, was it? Uh, Bitcoin was trading three percent and approach. It was near 20,000. So, yeah, it wasn't as high as it is now. Bitcoin wasn't. Okay. Super. Yeah, you got to be careful out there. It's not, So, like, you, you use an exchange like Celsius or Coinbase to buy the Bitcoin or crypto, and then as soon as you accumulate 
you know, a decent amount, 500 bucks, thousand bucks worth, you transfer it to your non-custodial wallet. Now the challenge with Celsius is they were given away 10% interest when people would supply their Bitcoin, they would lend their Bitcoin to Celsius. And it's, I mean, it's easier said now than looking back, but sometimes when something seems too good to be true, like 10% on your money is pretty unheard of. It usually is too good to be true. And a lot of these companies, they were just over leveraged. The money went high, you know, the price of Bitcoin went real high. And a lot of these companies got greedy and they didn't use sound principles. So people can get wrecked really bad in the Bitcoin space, crypto space. Uh, so it's important that people take the conservative long approach. Uh, I think we're beyond the days of get rich quick when it comes to crypto. Yeah, I miss I'm those not, days. <laughs> I love yeah. those. Like, I don't give a fuck as much as it sucked. Those were fun days, bro. We didn't know how good we had it. We're like, dude, jump on Cum Rocket right now. You can make a fucking... <laughs> Uh, 50 times what you paid for. You're like, oh my God, it was great. And then mm -hmm. every morning I woke up to look at my Bitcoin. Now I don't even give a fuck. I don't just well, let it sit I mean, there. it's just. Like, uh, back then I used to wake up every morning, like, what the It has that? to what figure it out, man. Yeah. And it's. But what I do find interesting, and then we'll let you go here, uh, John, is like they're crashing crypto as it slowly goes up. But to me, it's just like you're crashing this thing and then you're telling us we got to be on it. People are going to be so hesitant to deal in any of this stuff if you're constantly, like, crashing this thing. I mean, like, we don't even, I mean, maybe, John, you do because you are you seem like a maximist, which I love, a, a, a positive attitude towards it. But we don't even know how Bitcoin is calculated. Do we really have an understanding? One day it's up, next day it's down. Yeah, I, I try to look up why, why I was up this past couple of weeks, and there's no real reason why. Like, oh, look, someone did this, someone did that. No. Well, that's, I mean, that's just supply and demand, right? And then the pressures of, of how much Bitcoin's let. I mean, it's, it's a calculation, but we know the factors, I think, right? Do we? I mean, I'm stupid. No, it's just, it's... um Scarcity and... There's still a lot of price demand. discovery going on, right? So Bitcoin's relatively new as far as, a, a, as, far as digital companies commodities for sure but i mean look how long gold's been around right so the price is relatively stable but yeah it's just classic supply and demand um the more of something you have the less it tends to be worth uh the higher of a demand something is the more it tends to be worth and then when you look at the candlesticks right the green candlestick means the price went up in that period looking at a chart the red candlestick means the price went down and so when i study prices i i learned that Prices go up when there's more people that want to buy something than there are that want to sell something. Prices go down when there's more sellers than buyers. And then there's all sorts of news and there's all sorts of government intervention that has something to do with it. But really, it just takes like a little nudge because you have fundamental analysis. That's like Bitcoin is upgrading the software or the government's releasing an SEC report that says cryptocurrency can be traded as a security, something like that, right? That's fundamental analysis. Same thing for stock. The company has earning reports coming out on Thursday that show profits are higher. But then there's technical analysis where people do uh, technical analysis indicators, relative strength indi index, uh, Bollinger Bands, all this stuff, right? And so it's just like we're, we're watching the charts absent of anything that's really going on. And when there's a little bit of spike and it goes above its little resistance line, then the then people that are trading, they go in and buy it up. And so it has this like self-fulfilling pro prophecy, basically. But I think even though it's crazy and it's somewhat manipulated by big players on the market, offload like so people that have a ton of bitcoin and they want to drive the price down they can dump a bunch of the bitcoin so now it's selling and then the market's like oh my god the price is going down we better sell and then more people sell the price goes down then they buy it back up right there's all sorts of manipulation but it's a relatively free market kind of thing and we're still early on in the price discovery so if if your listeners want a free piece of advice the most safe way to get involved in Bitcoin is to do what's called dollar cost averaging. So you get together with your wife or the family, or if you're solo, you're just like, I think I believe in Bitcoin. I see the value in it. I think it's going to go up long-term in the future. I've determined that I can afford to buy $250 of Bitcoin every month. So you get onto a platform like Strike, for example, or Swan Bitcoin, and you program the software to buy 
$250 worth every 15th of the month. Or maybe you buy $20 every single day at 11 a.m. Then the price averages out over time. And historically, if you've done this for a long enough period, you, you'll you be up. Now, if you started when the price was $60,000 and, and you just are through doing it through today, you, you'll be down. But chances are, if you keep doing it for another year or two, you'll be back up. I'm very bullish long term on the price of Bitcoin, especially as more and more countries start using it as legal tender or holding it in their reserves. So that's a safe bet. A lot of people let their emotions get in the way, fear of missing out. They get greedy and the human element kind of causes people to make some mistakes. But if you just set it and forget it, I'm buying a thousand bucks a month. I'm buying 200 bucks a month. Over time, chances are you'll do pretty good. But Maybe Bitcoin goes to 5,000 or 2,000. I doubt it. Um, but just never invest more than you're willing to lose is another good rule of thumb. Well, I'm all in. Final question is you, you talk a lot about can we secure our data? I mean, is, is that the phone you're talking about? Or are there other ways to secure our data and private conversations? Yeah, yeah. So the above phone... It's private, right? And the big key difference is there's not a bunch of technology that's constantly sending data off of your phone. So that's the big innovation with these de-Googled phones. And my buddy Ramiro, who runs Above Phone, makes it real simple for you. And he does all the work. And he's somebody that I trust a lot. So, But um, when it comes to data, right, so you can encrypt your information. There's certain software where you can you know, type up an article or have your passwords and stuff and it's encrypted. Um, and then there's, you know, technology is always catching up. And so like you'll have older encryption that can be cracked, but at the same time, it's like an arms race. So by the time the government's able to crack this or that, the market and smart mathematicians, technologists have already created a new encryption algorithm. And then there's, um, privacy-based chat messaging, right? I'm a fan of Signal. There's folks in my circle, like Ramiro, for example, that are like purists. And because Signal got money from the government early on when it was started, same thing with the internet, of course, um, he thinks that that's cause for suspicion. But the cool thing about Signal, this is a messaging app for folks not aware, there's a lot of people that use it. So there's a network effect that's really important. That's why Bitcoin is so special. But he also is a fan of this XMPP. It's a little more complicated, but it's a decentralized chat technology, right? So people just need to be smart and recognize there's a balance between convenience and privacy. So the more you go to the privacy side, you're going to have to learn a little bit more. You'll have to maybe teach some of your friends to use an app or whatever, but, you know, early on when Bitcoin first started, it was way over everyone's head. And now a bunch of people own it. Right. But a lot of people aren't actually using it. It's easy to just own it and hold it compared to actually sending and receiving. We'll talk about that during the challenge. But yeah, I would just encourage people to at least be conscious of how much of their privacy they're giving up for convenience and to recognize where the world is going, this crazy dystopia, and to take proactive steps now so as to position themselves themselves for freedom and privacy in the future. Because what we're experiencing now, it's nothing compared to what things are going to be like in 2030. And so the great, the great reset, the World Economic Forum, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the United Nations, all these folks are positioning 2020 to 2030 as this decade of transformation. So I want to encourage our community, people that care about freedom and privacy, we can position this as a decade of transformation. And there's no reason why the new world order and all these clowns should have a monopoly on creating the future. We can create a future that we desire. And I think the CBDC thing is really, really a big critical step towards this tyranny, towards this this prison plan, it's digital prison planet. There are ways around it. And we're gonna teach everyone for free for five days how to opt out of it. And we're going to make it real simple, real accessible. And I always appreciate you guys for having me on and, and sharing this stuff. I'm very hopeful about the future, but it's going to take a lot of work and we got to start today. All right. The website is how to, uh, what's CBDC com. five day free seminar. That's why we like to have these people on. This is what I like to do. People like John, that are trying to help people free seminar. Come check it out. Save yourselves. Be the last action hero of your own 
story. <laughs> Save yourself. I'm going to look into this phone as well. Uh, John, keep it going. But, John, I want to thank you, too, for coming on, and I appreciate you. And we look forward to our next conversation. And good luck with your seminar. Right on. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us, buddy. You're the best. Take care, man. See you, dude. Bye. Later. Uh, I want. Can you play that video that I sent you of Gavin yep, Newsom? Right so you want to sit there and you go, Sam, you're a little weird. You're really uh, weird. You're really uh, crazy. You think there's this movement, this Malachian, there we go, we use the term again, movement to uh, destroy humanity. You're just talking crazy. So this is Gavin Newsom. I, uh, did you listen to this yet, Johnny? No, no hold on. I'm having some issues here. All right, let's see. We're having issues Might because that's see. what it is. Guys, go to samtriple.com. I think I'm going to try to contact that guy and see if he wants to be an affiliate of the show and put him on the website so people can start buying that phone. Oh, dude, yeah, that was that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, you ready for it? Yeah, I am ready for it. Oh, Are you Johnny. sure you're ready? Oh, for it? Johnny. Yeah, go on. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. What? I know it's a hold your hand idealistic point of view that somehow magically, I mean, God bless some of you. I, if you're like me, I've been known to have a glass of wine at night watching some of the nightly news. Uh, we all need to self medicate periodically. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. Listen wow. to what this guy hold your just hand said. Idealistic wanna, point of view. I, I'm somehow the magically, I mean, God bless some of you. I, if you're like me, I've been known to have a glass of wine at night watching some of the nightly news. You also uh, fucked your best friend. periodically. Why? And, and you have some Me Too shit they covered up. Allegedly. I just... I have a good authority. Damn mistakes I this country's ever made. I know it's a ha hold your hand idealistic point of view that somehow magically. I mean, God bless some of you. I, if you're like me, I've been known to have That's a glass of wine and not watch right some there. of the nightly news. Uh, we all need to self medicate periodically. And he, that's his thought on God, though. This magical, you know, like some things going to magically make you, you know, clean and sober. Yeah, he's like, but we got to medicate. That's what he's saying. Yeah. We got to medicate. Did God bless you, this clean and sober. Say that one more time. Listen to the exact words. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. Stop. I know it's a hold. I mean, what? 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 You're the governor of a country, of a state that is being crippled by drug addict homeless people. What are you talking about? Bro, he gives them drugs. Like this is this is a sign you of they don't want to fix the drugs. problems. Dude, that's gotta be a new t-shirt. I just don't know how I mean oh, what Clean is and Silver is the biggest mistake this country's ever made. <laughs> what? One that one more time. I have to hear it one it's more time. It's unbelievable, yeah. I have to make sure this is right. Well, I want to hear the full. I can't think of any context that this could be in unless he's quoting somebody else, you know, when something he disagrees with. That, what is that light, by the way? Is I that think it's Satan a coming through? No, I think it's a transition. Yeah. They cut okay. it out of a video, or like a news video or something. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. I know it's a ha hold your hand idealistic point of view that somehow magically, I mean, God bless some of you. I, if you're like me, I've been known to have a glass of wine at night watching some of the nightly news. Uh, we all need to self-medicate periodically. Clean and sober <laughs> is one of the biggest damn mistakes uh, this country's Steven ever Crowder's made. Website I know it's a ha hold your hand idealistic as, point uh, of view. Gavin Newsom says homeless said homeless need to self medicate, <laughs> which is essentially what he's saying. I mean, well, that explains why uh, dispensaries and uh, liquor was open during a self medicate. Yeah. Self medicate that was open throughout the whole fucking year. That guy's a clown. Yeah, he's a fucking clown. He's a fucking clown. Well, guys. Uh, once again, go check out the website. We got everything you need, everything Tim Fall Hat, everything Sam Tripoli, all the latest episodes, all the free audio you could want, all my dates, all our affiliates, which will give you nice discounts on things you need. I'm trying to find a butcher that does free, like does uh, quality meat to join us as well. I want to load you up on all the things you need to battle the forces of evil like Gavin Newsom and his jihad on clean and sober. You go on Nuke Social, my social media. 
You'll be able to go on uh, on Telegram. You'll be able to go on Zero. You'll be able to do it all, and then all the free, all the free audio you can ever listen to. You could listen to me all day, every day, forever. All at seven different shows: Tim Fall Hat, Broken Sim, The Sports Center, The Apocalypse, Cash Daddies for now for the investment thing. Punch Drunk Sports. You know the unwind. They're going right now as we record. Conspiracy Social Club, the number one debate show between binary men. And then my spiritual podcast, which saved my life. Zero. All of it free. You can listen for free. So, And then the radio station as well. So uh, anything else, guys? Nope. Listen, we don't smoke the same. And that's about it. Anything, Any Broken Johnny? Sam? No, just uh, check out Broken Sam. That's it. All right, guys. I love you guys very much. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's- you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.